Welcome to the Principles of Success. My name is Nathan, and this is Season 1, Episode 20, 20, Episode 20. And this is the episode where we were supposed to talk about momentum, but it's such an integral part of discipline that we kind of already went pretty into depth with it throughout the previous three episodes. So today, we're going to talk about the second half of it more in depth than I planned, and that is time management and having a purpose. Those are the two main things that we're going to talk about today. And first off, having a purpose higher than yourself is one of the most important things you can do to be more disciplined. If you are just trying to meet your immediate needs, you're going to do things that you're going to do the minimum that is required to survive. You can't be successful if all you're doing is the minimum. So what's your why? Why are you doing it? Why do you want to be successful? Why do you want to improve yourself, become better? Why? And ask yourself why at least five times uh, um, is an extremely useful tool. I think I've already talked about it already, so I won't go into depth on it, but ask yourself why, and then whatever your answer is, ask why for that as well. So for example, why am I doing a podcast? Because I want to uh, imbue my knowledge on, what the heck was that? For example, why am I doing this podcast? Because I want to share what I have learned with you guys. Why am I doing that? Or why do I want to do that? Uh, because it changed my life. And keep going down and down until you get to your root why, which is at least five deep and could be seven or nine deep. So keep going. And generally, I have something in my eye. Hold on. Generally, the... Root why, root why can cause you to tear up. I have cried multiple times from figuring from this process, and I'm not a crying person. So, but it doesn't necessarily have to make you cry. I've also done it plenty of times where I didn't. But it's important to figure out what your purpose is. Why are you doing it? And when you know what your purpose is, when you're in the fog of the struggle when you're climbing that hill and it's hard and you're tired and you don't want to do it anymore because it sucks and it's not fun and you just want to quit and you can't see the finish line yet the why you are doing it might be the only thing that keeps you going and sometimes and it's also important to have multiple whys you can have altruistic whys, which is helping others. You might also have some petty whys of base instinct of base needs, like I'm going to show them, things like that. And sometimes those whys are the only things that keep you going. And when you lose those whys, it's a lot, it's really hard to get going again and figuring out the new reasons why you're doing it, and if you even have reasons why you're still doing it. But being commit, but we'll talk more about not just quitting because you can't think of a why when we talk about persistence. Um, so that's at purpose. The rest of this episode, we're going to talk about time. And the first thing is you need to prioritize. Time management is very much about prioritization. You need to prioritize things that are important over things that are urgent. You still need to do the urgent things, but if you only ever do the urgent things, then you will never get to the important things. And if you never get to the important things, everything will be urgent. So it's kind of a catch 22. And that's why it's important to prioritize the important things. Because if you can get everything important done, the small problems, get solved before they turn into big problems. Um, 
And then the next thing I want to talk about for time is productive procrastination. And productive procrastination essentially is if you don't feel like it and you can't convince yourself to do it, even with all of the tips and tricks that we've talked about, at least procrastinate doing something useful. So for example, uh, let's say I wanted to procrastinate this. I could at least work on a book, on writing one of my books. If I didn't want to do, do that, I could go, at least go do the dishes. I'm not condoning or I'm not recommending procrastinating what you know that you need to do. But if all else fails and you decide that you're going to, and you end up procrastinating, at least try and have it be a procrastination that is still useful. Um, go work out, something. But don't just mindlessly scroll through social media because you're bored and you're too tired to do something. Go do something that is that you can convince yourself to do that is useful so that way you're propelling yourself forward, even if it's not necessarily what you should be doing at that exact moment. But don't let that be an excuse to not do what you need to do. It's back to contradictions. Take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> you need to try your best to do actually what is important and what you need to do. Um, next is morning versus evening productivity. I need to stop saying, um, when I'm reading morning versus evening productivity. Basically that's the idea of night owls versus more early birds and decision fatigue. So understanding yourself, you're going to have to go with this for a little bit. Are you somebody who has more energy and is more disciplined at night or in the morning? And not necessarily are you just somebody who enjoys staying up late. Most people enjoy staying up late. I'm not talking about that when I'm talking about night owls versus early birds. I'm talking about when are you most disciplined? I am most disciplined somewhere... I am not sure, I'm actually not sure where I'm most disciplined. A lot of times, we, which can be more complicated by the fact that there's the decision fatigue. So if you have more energy in the evening to get work done, but you're exhausted from work, it's going to be harder because you've already used all of your decisions, your good decisions throughout the day to get that done. But if you're exhausted in the mornings and can't get going in the mornings, no matter what time you go to bed, then even though you haven't had decision fatigue, it's still pretty hard, which is why you need to understand yourself. It will figure out, test, experiment, figure out when you are most productive. Is it in the evenings when there's a risk of you being decision fatigued, but you have more energy, or is it in the mornings where you might have more energy because you're naturally good at getting up earlier, um, and you have the be added benefit of not being decision fatigued. And that's actually why the early birds have a more, have a better reputation reputation for working hard than the night owls because when you're an early bird you have the energy in the morning plus you don't have the decision fatigue so you can get all of that important stuff done before most people even wake up but if you're a night owl and you do have a lot of decision fatigue you have to decide whether you, it, you'll be more productive in the morning even though you'll be tired but don't have decision fatigue or you'll be more productive in the evening when you have more energy, but you may have decision fatigue. So you'll have to figure that out on your own and figure out when you're most productive and then schedule, schedule your time. Um, 
Scheduling is important to time management. If you don't have a schedule, it won't, if it's not on your schedule, it probably won't get done. So if you don't have an allotted time to go work out, you probably won't do it. If you don't have a bedtime, if you don't have a wake up time, if you don't plan your day, your day will just do whatever it wants. Granted, your day will still do whatever it wants, which is why you it's hard to have a minute by minute breakdown and you'll get tired and you won't want to stick to the schedule and all of that. So plan the schedule that you want, not necessarily that you need to do. How much you need back to self-awareness. How, how long can you work for before you need a break? Uh, how long can you work for before you're extremely tired and need to be done for an extended period of time? How long, what rewards will incentivize you to get the stuff done that you need to get done? All of that is, you need to plan into your schedule as well. Because you can't just be, all right, I'm going to get up at five in the morning. I'm going to work out. Then I'm going to do this and that and this and that and this and this and this and this and that. And then you say, screw it. I don't want to do that and just go play video games. It doesn't work. You have to make sure that the schedule that you plan is something that you might actually do. Because if it's not something you'll do, you're not going to do it, and it will, the whole exercise is completely pointless. And that's why, and I think, personally, I think the most important part of a schedule is your bedtime. I don't care what time you go to bed, but it needs to be a set time every single night. Uh, that goes into circadian rhythms and stuff like that. Most often people focus on the getting up at a certain time, but you also need a certain amount of sleep. So if you have a set time where you know you're going to bed, you're naturally going to get up at the time that you need. Uh, so plan what time you need to get up for your schedule and then just subtract how many hours of sleep that you need. I need on average about, um, seven hours, seven and a half hours. So I plan for eight to just kind of wind down and make sure that I can fall asleep in time. And then I naturally wake up before my alarm clock goes off. And we'll talk more about sleep and all of that later, but planning your schedule throughout your day, including your bedtime is extremely important. And then back to the preparedness. Have your night routine prepare you for your morning routine, so that way your morning routine can prepare you for the rest of your day. Make sure that you have everything you need, so that way the momentum of your morning routine is automatic and will set you up to win the day. That's why I think the night routine is the most important, because it's preparing when you're awake and conscious, preparing you for when you're half asleep and waking up. So, make sure that you stick to that night routine. Next is be punctual. Nothing ticks off successful people more than you wasting their time. Which is funny because successful people are also terrible at being punctual because they're so busy. They have a million things going on. So they'll look at the clock and go, ah, uh, I can maybe finish this episode before I have to run out the door and try and squeeze as much time as they can into it. But when it comes to relationships and stuff like that with successful people, you need to try and be as punctual as possible. So it's another contradiction thing. Pushing as much as you can with what most successful people do to try and squeeze out every minute they can versus making sure that they're on time so they're not wasting other people's time. Because punctuality isn't about you. It's about the other person. And that goes more into relationships. But if you're not being punctual, the pe people that you're wasting time will slowly grow to resent you. And when you burn down relationships, relationships are extremely important to success. So it's an important time management skill as well. Next is being efficient. I actually just recently talked about this in one of my financial book reviews that I did with interviewing the experts. I did about seven or nine of 
financial books. You should go watch those or listen to those. Um, but essentially what I'm talking about is the 80-20 rule, is the $5 job. Basically what those two principles are talking about is 80% of your results come from 20% of what you do. Figure out what that 20% is and just do that. We think we need to be perfect, but if we do, let's just, let's say one job that you do generates $100 and the rest of your day is filled with jobs that do $5. Well, if that job is all that you did, you will make so much more money doing that one job than you lost from not doing the rest of the jobs. That's where getting it covered comes into play too. And that's where the ne this next principle is, don't do the $5 job. Do the hundred dollar job. If you, an example of this is if you're so busy mowing a giant area of land because you have a big front yard, that's an hour or two hours of your time that you spent working that doesn't pay much. Whereas if you had spent the hour, two hours working on something that pays a whole lot, you could have just paid somebody to do that lawn. Now, some of you might enjoy landscaping. Some of you don't have the resources to get it covered yet, and you'll have to do that. But back to the just not lazy part, this is also important of why you need to get it covered. If you are so busy doing a job that somebody else can do that you can't do the job that only you can do, then you're going to have a much harder time of succeeding. Like... I don't know where I was going with that, but being efficient, not wasting time on unimportant tasks. That's super important to time management and being effective at your time. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is a quote of focus on today, not tomorrow or yesterday. Yesterday is in the past. You can't change it. And tomorrow is a mystery. And you, you can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow. Nobody predicted coronavirus. Nobody's business plans included coronavirus. Nobody's plans for their summer included coronavirus. You can't predict everything that's going to happen. So focus on what you're doing instead of daydreaming about possible what ifs. That's still important, but if it's coming at the cost of your productive time, don't do it. Or don't, at least, don't waste too much of your time doing it. Anyway, I think that's going to end it here for today. If this was value to, of value to you, please share it with people who you care about that might also get value out of this. And I will see you all next week.